together tonight. Our entry into 2021 has been a bit of a bumpy one, but as much as I've seen jokes online about how people have had their one week trial of this new year and are ready to request a full refund, there are blessings to be found even now. First, we made it to 2021. And whatever this week, whatever this week and this year will be, we know that it will be different than what we experienced in 2020. May this new year be filled with changes and healing that we all need for the good. Second, more and more people are being vaccinated every day and we can begin to see a glimmer on the horizon of what it may be to safely be together again in person. Third, there are people across this community and across our country right now taking care of each other with extraordinary chesed, with kindness, and working for what is right with remarkable tzedek, with justice. Those moments when we can keep our eyes both at once on the people right in front of us and on our vision of the world as it should be, our blessings in themselves. And finally, there is the blessing of us being here together tonight. And while we cannot deny that there are reasons in our world and in our country right now to be anxious, as Rabbi Nachman of Breslov taught, Though the world is a narrow bridge where it is easy to fear that we might fall, the essence of what we can do in response is not to make ourselves more afraid. Instead, we come here together tonight to find healing and courage and to replenish ourselves with this incredible gift of Shabbat. We join together on page 339 with these words of Rabbi Nachman, Gesher Tsar Ma'od. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. 
words of this song, a bridge into Shabbat for us. It's our joy and pleasure to welcome a member of our choir and beloved member of our community, Candy Steingesser, to join us in singing the blessing and lighting the Shabbat candles this evening. Thank you so much, Candy. It is wonderful to be here with you in our Zoom room and to welcome Shabbat with you. Oh, and as Candy returns to her seat by switching off her camera, we turn in our books to pages 20 and 21 for Lachad Odi. And as we greet the Shabbat as our beloved, as our companion, we'll be singing tonight verses one, two, five, eight, and nine. And for that final verse, the tradition is to rise as you are able and to face the door to bow to greet the bride. Shalom, 
Agadluma asechaya, hallelujah. Welcome Shabbat. We welcome each other as well. If there's someone in there in the room with you, give them a big hug. If there's someone across the town or across the country, you'd love to say Shabbat Shalom to and send your love. This is a great time to text. And we turn now to page 26 for the Chatsi Kaddish. Entrances to holiness are everywhere. The possibility of ascent is all the time. Even at unlikely times and through unlikely places, there is no place on earth without the presence. We rise now for Baruch Hu on page 28. <laughs>
You may be seated. Baruch ata Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam, asher bidvaro ma'ari varavim, v'hoch ma'poteach she'arim, uvitvuna m'shinei itim, u'machalif et hazmanim, u'msadera takochavim b'mishmero tehem barakia kirtzono, v'orei yom v'alayla golel or mibnei choshech, v'choshech mibnei or. As you taught Torah to those whose names I bear, teach me Torah too. Its mystery beckons, yet I struggle with its truth. You meant Torah for me. Did you mean the struggle for me too? Don't let me struggle alone. Help me to understand, to be wise, to listen, to know. Lead me into the mystery. Baruch Standing on the parted shores of history, we still believe what we were taught before ever we stood at Sinai's foot, that wherever we go, it is eternally Egypt, that there is a better place, a promised land, that the winding way to that promise passes through the wilderness, that there is no way to get from here to there except by joining hands, marching together. Micha Mocha is on page 40. Micha Mocha Ba Elima Adonai Micha Mocha Nedar Ba Sepele, 
As we turn now in our Siddurim to page 42, we come to the Hashki Venu, our prayer for the evening. Lovely to welcome Liat up to our digital bimmer to share in seeing the words of Hashki Venu. As we now turn in our Siddharim to page 46, coming to our Amida, rising as we are able, facing towards. Ba 
Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu velohe avotenu vimotenu Elohe Abraham, Elohe Yitzchak, Elohe Yaakov, Elohe Sarah, Elohe Rivka, Elohe Rachel, Elohe Lea, Ha El Hagadol, Hagibor Behanora, El Elyon, Gomel Chasadim Tovim, Bekone Akol, Bezocher Chaste Avot Vimaot, Ume Vigula Livne Vnehem, Lema an shemo beachava, melech ozer moshiach umagen, baruch atah Adonai, magen Abraham vezrat Sarah, atagi bor leolam Adonai, mechayem etimata rab lechoshiach, mashiv haruach umorid hagashem, mechal kel chayim bechesed. Mechaye metim berachamim rabim, so mech noflim berofe cholim, umatir asurim, umekaye memunato, lishene afar, micha mocha baal givurot, umido melach, melech me mit, umechaye, umats miach yeshua. Pne manatal chachayot meitim, Baruch atah Adonai, Mechaye ha meitim. Ata kadosh v'shim cha kadosh, Ukudoshim mecho yom yaluch ha-sela, Baruch atah Adonai, Ha-el ha-kadosh. We continue silently now with our own private Amidah, Using the words of the page or the words of our hearts through until page 62, please feel free to be seated at the conclusion of your prayers. Is 
struggle to take care of one another. Comfort us, comfort us in our wilderness. Comfort us as we struggle with this world. Nahamu, Nahamu. With those words of comfort ringing in our ears, we turn now in our Siddurim to page 253, recognizing that while Shabbat is a day of joy and celebration, there are those amongst us who are suffering, those in need of healing of the mind, body, soul, or spirit. And so we take a moment now to think of all those who are in need of healing, the names that we see on the screen, other names that we might name ourselves as we offer this prayer now for healing. Mi she berach avotenu mekor habracha leimotenu. May the source of strength who bless the ones before us help us find the courage to make our lives a blessing. And let us pray, Amen. Mi she berach imotenu mikor habracha leavotenu. Bless those in need of healing with refuah shlema. The renewal of body, the renewal of spirit, and let us say, Amen. At 2.15 on Wednesday afternoon, I got a text from my father. What is happening in your country? With three question marks for the full effect. At the time, I assumed he was simply talking about objections to the democratic process and the fact that the elected politicians were challenging the validity of the election that had sent them to Congress. I reassured him that it was simply politics and that they would work their way through it. But he texted back. But there are people in the Capitol Hill building who may be armed. Unbelievable. At that point, I got up from my desk, switched on the news and stood there, unable to move as I watched images I could hardly believe were taking place in our nation's capital. There are some pictures that create an indelible mark on the mind and stay with a person. Seeing Secret Service agents with their guns drawn defending Congress, Congress was shocking. Watching elected officials and their aides cowering behind chairs was painful. And seeing the brazen way in which these terrorists and criminals pushed past and ignored the police was frightening. On Wednesday afternoon into the evening, I found myself navigating among and stopping on three primary emotions. There was fear. I was scared by what was happening in DC Concerned that our country was under attack from insurgent forces who were challenging and seeking to destroy the very foundations of our democracy. There was sadness. How had we gotten to this point where armed citizens were trying to, at best, intimidate our politicians and at worst, overthrow the government? And then there was a real sense of anger. I was and still am angry that this is the situation we are facing. Angry at the people perpetrating these crimes. Angry at the leaders and institutions who have enabled and emboldened them. Angry that this is America in 2021. To feel just one of these emotions in an intense way can be crushing and paralyzing. 
To feel them all together was overwhelming. Wednesday was an overwhelming day. And for many of us, we are still living in its shadow, scared, sad, and angry about what happened. I have so many responses that I wanna share in relation to what we witnessed. I could not believe the way in which these violent criminals demonstrated a sense of entitlement to push past law enforcement officers, to disrespect the institutions of our government and to commit crimes in broad daylight for the world to witness. We watched American flags being taken down. We saw a Confederate flag being waved in the halls of the Capitol and we saw a total disrespect for the symbols of this country. I couldn't help but think about what the reaction might have been had the protesters' skin color been different. We unfortunately know there is a double standard here and that there would have been and has been a different response. And then as a Jew, it was painfully clear to the sea that the anti-Semites were out in force. One man wore a sweatshirt that had emblazoned on it the words Camp Auschwitz above a skull and crossbones, while another had a shirt that read 6MWE. I had to look this one up, and I'm sad to share that the initial stand for 6 million wasn't enough. These are the people who were storming our capital. These are the people who are trying to subvert democracy. These are the people who are promoting a white supremacist agenda that threatens our country, our society, and all of us. Now, I am sure that there are some who participated in the rally who do not support a white supremacist agenda. But when you find yourself standing next to the person wearing a Camp Auschwitz or a 6MWE shirt, you have to ask yourself about the company that you are keeping. You have to recognize that by standing shoulder to shoulder, you encourage their behavior. You have to recognize that by defending their right to protest and invade the capital, you encourage their agenda. You have to recognize that when you say to the crowd, I love you, you give them your support. It was shocking to see the events of Wednesday afternoon. But as we reflect on it now, with the benefit of the past 48 hours, we can also see how the events were predictable. These groups, these crowds, these individuals have been encouraged, egged on and mobilized by our political leaders, by so-called news networks and by various racist conspiracy promoting groups and individuals. Many of these groups had brazenly posted on social media about their plans to storm the Capitol, to overthrow the government and to subvert the democratic process. We knew what was coming because they told us. We simply didn't believe them. If there is one lesson that we must take away from the events of this week, it is to finally and fully learn the lesson that words matter. We have spent weeks, but in reality, there have been many months and years when words have been spoken by our leaders, politicians and influencers that have stoked the flames of hatred, that have encouraged distrust of our institutions and that have laid the ground for Wednesday's events. After weeks of hearing that the election was a fraud, that cheating has taken place, that there has been a subversion of the electoral process, it's hardly surprising that after an invitation to gather in Washington DC, the protesters decided to take matters into their own hands. A protesting mob became a criminal crowd who ultimately might best be labeled as terrorists attempting a coup against this country. Words were the match that ignited a fire that engulfed the capital. Of course, actions are important and a person must be held accountable for them. But all too often we excuse words as just talk. We imagine that they emerge from a person's mouth and essentially fall to the ground. But we know that once spoken, words have a tremendous power to harm, to cause destruction and to ignite flames that burn long after the words are spoken. In our Jewish tradition, words are the very bedrock of creation. God spoke and it came to be. The words became real. And while we might think that this is simply in relation to divine words, our own words also have the power to be translated into action. Rabbi Israel Salanta, the founder of Musa, said, not everything that is thought should be said, and not everything that is said should be repeated, and not everything that is repeated 
should be remembered. While Wednesday was a dark day in this country's history, we should also recognize that once order was restored to the Capitol, senators and Congress people returned to the democratic process. They finished the work that had been interrupted when they were evacuated to safety. Democracy prevailed and the election was certified. And as I sat glued to the television, it was striking to hear the words that so many of them spoke from across the aisle. The words that condemned the actions of the criminals who had been in the chamber hours earlier. The words that warned of the danger that these people posed to our country. The words that sought to rise above political divisions to heal what so clearly has been broken. I was struck by Senator Romney, who stood up in the chamber and declared, the best way we can show respect to the voters who are upset is by telling them the truth. That's the burden. That's the duty of leadership. It is easy to speak. And today it is unfortunately easy to find a platform from which to share words and incite violence, anger, and hate. We need words that are true. We need words that can heal. We need words to rise above our current divisions. In this week's Torah portion, we read the story of how an angel of God appeared to Moses in a burning bush. The amazing thing is that while there was a blazing fire coming out of the bush, it was not consumed. As we react to Wednesday's events, it is easy to be consumed by the emotions of fear, sadness, and anger. It would be understandable to be paralyzed. But we cannot allow ourselves to be consumed. We must respond like that bush in the wilderness, burning hot with a commitment to make things better and refusing to be consumed by the fire that surrounds us. Wednesday was a scary day in our nation's history. It is a day that I hope will be remembered by all of us as a day when our republic, our democracy, our nation's very soul came under attack. But I also hope that we will remember that these, the fact that these forces did not defeat us. It is important to celebrate the fact that our elected representatives returned to the Congress and stayed until almost 4 a.m. to certify the election result. They refused to be intimidated or bullied and instead ensured the democratic process continued. And actually, for the first time in what feels like years, we had politicians from both sides of the aisle united. The riotous mob brought senators and Congress people together in their opposition and condemnation of what had happened earlier in the day. Some even changed their votes, recognizing the gravity of that moment and the call of the hour. It is my hope that the experience of Wednesday will serve as a wake up call for us all. For me personally, in the space of just over two months, I pledged allegiance and became a citizen. I participated in the democracy and voted for the first time. And then I witnessed what some are calling an attempted coup. There were a few people in the last 48 hours who have asked me if I regretted my decision to become a citizen or if I was having second thoughts. The answer is unequivocally no. I did not join because I thought it would be easy. I pledged myself because I believed and still believe in the vision of America to which we are aspiring. As Jews, I don't believe that we one day simply enter the promised land as a specific place on earth. I believe that our obligation each and every day is to do what we can to make our world and our country a promised land. We have seen what destructive words can do, but we also know that words can heal. Words can repair what was once broken. Words can bring us back together. In this week's Torah portion at the burning bush, Moses and God speak. They share words. And Moses asks God for God's name to be able to tell the people. And God responds with words. My name is Ehyeh Asher Ehyeh. It is enigmatic Hebrew that is difficult to translate but it most literally means I will be what I will be. This is a name of promise and possibility. It is a name that is yet to be defined. It is a name with stories still to be written. It is all about the future potential. America too is Nihia Aser Nihia. We will be what we will be. There is promise and possibility. 
There is a future yet to be defined, and there are stories still to be written. Wednesday was a dark day when we saw the danger of words inciting hate and violence. But it was also a day that ended with words of healing, words of unity, and words of comfort. We have the power to choose the words that we will add to the American story to ensure that we reach up to our highest ideals, follow our best inclinations, and recreate here a beacon of democracy, promise, and hope. May the words of our mouths and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, Adonai, our rock and our redeemer. As we return now to our Siddurim, we turn to the Aleinu that you'll find on page 282. We rise as we are able, facing towards the east. Yes, Shakar. Shallow some hell kedu kaham, the good ali nu kedham on hum, the nach nu korim, who mishahadim nu modim, leaf name halach malachi hamlachim, hakadosh paruhu, let a kenolam the mahud shadai, then never. The Hyadonai, Lemelachal Kohorat, by Yom Hahu, by Yom Hahu, Yadonai Echad, Ushimbo, Ushimbo, Ushimbo Echad. As we turn to page 294 in our mourners' Kaddish, we never conclude a service without sacred memory, remembering our loved ones who are no longer with us. This Shabbat, we remember the yard sites of Victor Oresti, Pauline Bensky, Deborah Burstein Wands, Marion Elfman, Lester Feldman, Naomi Irene Goodman, Joseph Goodman, Jay Bentley Homer, Marsha Jamron, Max Katz, Richard Kukura, Sylvia Levinson, Cindy Lombardo, Moshe Lustig, Julia Lustig, Hyman Lustig, Melvin Mamelin, Leonard Marglas, Selma Morse, Albert Postrel, Murray Regensberger, Benjamin Rosenberg, Irving Schnabel, Paul Siegel, Sterling Shapiro, Ruth Shapiro, Amy Schumann, Albert Weadro, and Esther Roth. And during the month of Shloshim, we remember Irv Liss, the father of Bonnie Liss, Marvin Shapiro, the father of Richard Shapiro, Pamela Spiegel, the mother of Stephen Spiegel, Edward Ray, the father of Dina Ray, Mildred Field, the mother of Joyce Pastor, and Darina Wusu, the mother of Lee Cooper. We take a moment now for each of us to name others that we're thinking of this Shabbat. For all those we name out loud and for those we name in our hearts, we say together, Yit Kadal Vit Kadash Shemei Rabbah, Bialmadi Vrach Yurutei V'Amlich Malchutei, Bachayachon of Yamechon of Chaye de Chol Beit Israel, Bagalau Vizman Kariv Imru Amen, Yehe Shme Rabam of Arach Lolam Ulme Al Maya, Yit Barach Vishtabach Vit Paa Vit Ramam Vit Nase, Vitada Vitale Vitalal Shme de Kucha Brichu, Leela Min Kobir Hatava Shirata, Tushbachata Venechemata, Damiran Ba Alma Vimru Amen, Yehe Shlam Araba Min Shamaya, Bahaim Alem of Al Kol Israel, the Imru Amen. O se shalom bim Ramav, who ya se shalom. Alem of Al Kol Israel, the Imru Amen. Zichronam Livracha, may their memories always be for a blessing. And let us say Amen. We turn now in our Sidrim to page five as we're led by Jay Z in the Kiddush and Motsi. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pari HaGafen, 
Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kidshanu B'mitzvotav Veratzav Anu V'Shabbat Kodesho B'yachav Ahu V'Ratzon Hinchilanu Zikaron Lemaase Bereshit Ki Hu Yom Techila Lemikra Ekodesh Zecher Letziat Mitzrayim Kivanu vacharta, veotanu kidashta, mikol hamim. Vishabat kotshecha, biyahava uvratzon, hinchaltanu. Baruch ata Adonai, mikadesh hashabat. Amen. L'chaim. I've got my mini challah roll. <laughs> Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam Hamotzi lechem min haaretz Amen. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. And for this evening's service, before we end our service, recognizing the brokenness that surrounds us in so many ways, we wanted to share one final prayer to leave this space, if you will, with a mood of healing and the healing that is possible for us, for our community, for our society, and for the world. And so we share now the choir singing, Heal Us Now. If I ain't
We wish you all a Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Good Shabbos. Shabbat Shalom. Shabbos.